as NBA fans this year, we have been blessed with a pretty interesting start of the season. We were giving plenty of surprises like John Morant and the Grizzlies or Darius Garland and the Cavs actually being good teams and to some people being title contenders or even teams like the Suns and the Miami Heat who have been dominant in a versatile force that scares everyone. Or teams like the Warriors, man. The Warriors are finally returning to be a contenders. And of course, Klay Thompson finally returning after nine, what, 934 days, something like that. Or even teams that are struggling like the Lakers and the Hawks who have just came off of decent years and haven't been able to get it back on track. And especially the Lakers. I'm not really surprised about them struggling if you actually watch basketball. You knew Russell Westbrook and the Lakers wasn't going to work. And of course, you have the whole Ben Simmons drama. And you have the whole <laughs> James Harden drama. But overall, as NBA fans, we have been blessed. And I think the second half will be even more exciting. If you look at the East, the sixth seed is separated from the first seed by four games. With the race being one of the tightest we've seen in a long time, this second half of the season means a lot. We will see teams try extra hard because in one game, you can easily fall down all the way down to the sixth or the seventh seed and be out of home court and that will be taken away from you if you go out there and play lackluster crazy thing is with the east right the bucks the nets the 76ers the heat and the bulls one thing a lot of people will say about them is they're contenders crazy thing is though one or even two of those teams will be out in the first round <laughs> that's wild a contending team being eliminated in the first round because the East is so deep is something we haven't seen in a long time. East or West, we haven't seen it. On the West, it's nothing like that. The Suns and the Warriors, they're the big dogs. And that's by a huge mar margin. I think the Suns are, what, 46 and 10. They're not really getting touched. And the Warriors are like 42 or something like that. And with Chris Paul being out for six to eight weeks, maybe the Suns may drop. But point Devin Booker is not a slouch. <laughs> Devin Booker played point guard for a whole season and averaged seven assists last year in a, in a playoffs. They needed him to play point guard for one game because Chris Ball, I believe, had COVID or something was wrong with him. I think um, his wrist was hurting again. And um, Devin Booker dropped his first ever triple-double. So Devin Booker can play the point guard role. Also, I think after yesterday's All-Star game performance of Steph Curry, I think that's all he needed. To see his season turn around. The dude dropped 50 points. After hitting 15 threes. Don't be surprised if he catches up. With Giannis Antetokounmpo. Joel Embiid and uh, Nikola Jokic. In the MVP race this year. Like he did last year. I know y'all remember last year in April. Where he averaged 37.6 rebounds. And 4 assists. Shooting 51% for the field. And 46 from the three. It will happen again. I definitely believe it would happen. I'm not even going to say it may. It will happen again. I've never seen Steph Curry that hot before yesterday. That was just something crazy. And I I, I, I hate people so much. Because there was some people who was talking about, oh, again, Steph Curry not showing up in the big moments. Because he didn't um, reach the most points in the All-Star game. He had 50 instead of 52. But still, I've never seen Steph Curry that hot. It was amazing to watch. And I think in this second half of the season, we will see Steph Curry put his name back in the MVP race. I've counted a total of eight contenders in the league this year, um, and that means this playoff can be something really historic. Bearing no injuries, um, some minor, minor injuries will happen, most likely, and I hope they're just minor, but no serious injuries. We might be reaching one of the best playoffs we've seen in a long time, man. Like, look at the contenders. The Memphis Grizzlies, Suns, the Warriors, that's it for the West. On East, we have... The Nets, the Bulls, the 76ers, the, well, the Milwaukee Bucks, the Miami Heat. That is eight contenders. And some people might even look at the Cavs, you know, the, the way we've been playing. Some people might even look at the Celtics, the way they've been playing and be like, yo, nobody wants to face this Cavs team defense. Nobody wants to do that. The Celtics have the best defense in the league. Nobody wants to face their defense. That would mean we have a total of 10 contenders in this league. This playoffs can be something we've never seen before, and I can't wait, bro. I can't wait till in the first round we're getting the Bulls versus the Nets. 
like stuff like that like that is something that we haven't seen before you like oh man i don't know who's coming out bro i don't know who's coming out of this round bro they're both a1 teams i can't i can't tell i can't wait till we reach a point of that bro because it's going to be some historic stuff happening in the series and then when you go into the um awards the mvp race and the rookie of year race will be super tight Joanna B has been doing this thing. Jokic has been doing this thing. Giannis has looked amazing. And they all look like front runners. But like I just told y'all. Well, before I tell y'all that, DeMar DeRozan, we have to start giving him his his respect. Um, I know if you see me on Twitter, everybody was like, is DeMar DeRozan in the MVP race? I kept saying no. I kept saying no. But when I looked at the stats and when I watched him, bro, I can't keep being disrespectful. <laughs> I can't. The stuff that he's doing, bro. This is the best we've ever seen of DeMar DeRozan, and that's crazy because he's had some really impactful, great years. But the stuff that he's doing right now is just otherworldly. So we have to put his name in it. And like I said, I don't think I know. Steph Curry is going to put his name back in his MVP race. This MVP race can be historic because we have six, seven players that can literally have a argument to be the MVP. And then you look at the rookie of the year race. A lot of people might think Evan Mobley is going to run away with it because he's been the best rookie so far. And the Cavs have been one of the best stories in the league. But guys like Cade and Josh Giddy, they're going to step it up. And Scotty Barnes being as consistent as he's always been. Like, come on, Mal. This is going to be a really <laughs> a really deep rookie of the year race, man. There's a lot of stuff that's going to happen with the rookies, man. Um, you already know Josh Giddy, his fans are crazy. My Josh Giddy video I just uploaded two days or what four days ago has two thousand views. What? That's the most I've ever had. I'm about to turn this whole page into a um, Oklahoma City Oklahoma City Thunder page, bro, because their fans they ride hard. Pause, especially for Josh Giddy. But yeah, as NBA fans, man, we're about to be in store for an amazing second half of the season, a historic second half of the season. I can't wait to see how it all falls down. Um, I might do my predictions, my second half of the season, like real predictions when I tell you like who's going to be the best team um, and uh, all the awards and all that stuff. I might do that tomorrow. But as of right now, man, if you're an NBA fan, don't just enjoy basketball. Just enjoy that basketball. That's all I can tell you, man, because we are surrounded by a lot of young talent. We've been watching a lot of great basketball this year, man. Just really just sit back and enjoy basketball because we are in the golden ages of talent, man. Look at this shot by Zach V, man. <laughs> I might just end it off that, man. Other than that, man, this is it for this video, man. I'll talk to you later. Peace out.